My name is Sabine Junginger. I am a professor and design researcher working at the Lucerne University of Applied Sciences and Arts, where I'm heading the Competence Center for Design and Management. In this brief session, we will learn about design in government. Every policy provides a guideline or framework for the future development of products and services through which this policy is enacted and realized. In other words, every policy delineates the kinds of services and products that follows from it. Each policy has direct consequences for the relationships and the manner of interactions that are possible encouraged or discouraged for how people engage with government. This makes policies unique and underlines why we have to understand how are we going about designing them if we want to invent new possibilities that lead to new and better outcomes. Many of you will be familiar with the policy cycle in slide one. Let's talk a little about the design thinking the design principles, methods, and the process here. Overall, this policy cycle makes a lot of sense. Policy design here begins after a problem has been identified. However, it remains unclear who or how and why we arrive at the problem. But since there is now a problem, this problem needs to be clarified so that an appropriate policy response can be formulated. All this, according to this design approach, only concerns those we think of as policymakers. Those we deem to be policy implementers only enter into the picture after that policy has been designed. It is the public manager who is now taking over to develop or adjust their own public services in such a way that brings the new policy to life. Aside from omitting people and services, this approach also suggests that we go about designing policies in the way of a relay race. We move from the start to the finishing line in one linear fashion and direction, merely handing over the baton after each lap. More often than not, the response mode does not allow for fresh inquiries, but it encourages us to project the future based on data we already have. Let us compare this with a policy cycle built around the practices principles and methods of human-centered design. The purpose of human-centered design is to enhance human living by focusing on the human experience and on human interactions. Now, human-centered design is a term many people confuse with user-centered design. When we focus on the user, that is, when we apply principles and methods of user-centered design, we are concerned with a one-to-one -one interaction. There is a person. This person has been assigned a role, namely that of a user. And this person uses a particular gadget, interface, form or service. Our design concerns are about whether, how, when or why a person makes use of them. Our focus is and remains the one-to-one -one interaction. A human-centered design perspective builds on the user-centered design approach. We may start with a one-to-one -one interaction, but we look at it systemically. Individual experiences are framed by questions of human dignity, human rights, fairness, social justice and social cohesion as we engage with societal, environmental, economic and technological challenges and opportunities. When we go about designing in government, we need to pay attention to the experience of the individual person as he or she fulfills their citizen obligation or executes her rights as a member of society, as a member of the public. At the same time, we need to adhere to matters of equality and justice. With this in mind, we can now think of what a policy cycle would look like from a human-centered design perspective. What you see is an iterative design process that puts people and services in the center. This means that at every stage of this policy cycle, we pay attention 
to who needs to be involved, who needs to be included, and for whom is the policy supposed to affect an improvement, so that we get the best understanding of what we need to create and who and what is needed to implement the policy. Beginning with policy intent, we can identify three aspects of policy design the traditional policy cycle does not address. The first concerns product development, where we clearly understand that the product is the policy. The second concerns organizational change, where governmental agencies and public organizations focus on their own abilities to develop and administer the appropriate, desirable, useful and usable services and products that are needed to bring the policy to life. Consequently, there is then a third focus on the actual development of these particular products and services. This integrated policy design cycle demands different skills and capabilities from those involved in the design process. I will provide you with one more tool to start your own reflection on how you may go about designing, which I have loosely called the Organizational Design Engagement Matrix. The matrix proposes that public organizations have basically three options to engage with design challenges. They can either design for citizens, with citizens, or they can give the design lead to the citizens themselves. There are very good reasons to choose one over the other in a particular case. Then, in a second step, ask yourself, are you happy with your design outcomes? You may ask, do our services reach the very people we want to reach at the right time, in the right place, and in the form or format that they can easily use and find meaningful? All these are questions that can be addressed through a different design approach. In fact, they require you to approach design differently. The rise of public sector innovation labs is rooted in this recognition that we can go differently about designing in government to achieve more desirable, more inclusive outcomes, while at the same time being more efficient, proactive, and much faster. In these labs, human-centered design plays a central role. But there's other examples like at the EU level, members of the EU Commission and members of the EU Parliament are now participating in policy labs to apply these new approaches to policy design in the context of the COVID Recovery Fund.